Ramble. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the second episode of You Can Sit With Us. Today, we're just going to be talking about how we met and like the roots of our friendship. How's everyone's weekend? We'll just talk about light things first. <laughs> oh, because because it's so heavy the way yeah, that I know. Yeah. Like, our dark and sordid <laughs> past. <laughs> Ho, ho, ho. Mm. Well, we were just talking about how today is uh, Keith and Becky's anniversary. Happy Yay. anniversary. Oh, Thank my you. goodness. It's our date anniversary. Oh, okay. Not so our marriage. Say, we got like, married in September. How yeah. many so, years? Nine years. That you. That wow. was the first date. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. What was nine the first years. date like? <sighs> oh, I debate telling this story because Keith gets so mad about it because <gasps> I don't ever let it go. Um, (laughs) so Keith and I, we actually met in college. Mm -hmm. Um, the first time I ever met Keith was the same day my parents first ever met Keith. (gasps) It was at freshman orientation. Keith was a senior Mm. and he was representing like the improv group and I had done some improv in high school. So my dad, which we had just talked to my parents on the phone. So they know my parents bubbly energy. My dad like takes me and my mom over by Keith and is like, hey, I just wanted to, you know, introduce you to my daughter. She does improv. <laughs> She's a very talented actress. Uh, and <laughs> Keith's like full stoner, long hair, like bandana. And he's like, cool, 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 cool. Very nice. Um, but we actually didn't date when Keith and I were in college. We started dating when I was a junior in college. And Keith was living in Chicago. Keith was living in Chicago. He was mm-hmm. touring with um, an improv group at the time. And he had come back to ISU to do this, like, um, they call them f- mafia funerals because they're the group that he was in was called Improv Mafia. Mm-hmm. And so when you graduate, they have a mafia funeral. And so all the um, older people come back. And I had told one of my friends that who's had a boyfriend who was in the group at the time. I was like, man, Keith got cute. What the? What Did the your dad Did he recognize his hair? Him when you first started dating? Oh, they knew once, like, later when I first told them about him, because I didn't really tell my parents about people I was dating until it was, like, more serious. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So then I was like, oh, yeah, you actually met him this other time. They're like, oh, yeah, I remember him. I remember him. <laughs> Crazy looking nice guy, guy, right? Yeah. Uh, nice dude. Nice he dude. was already trying to play matchmaker, so. <laughs> yeah, he was already he was getting a foot in the door there. Um, but our first date was actually, we were like messaging on Facebook Messenger. What? Oh. Yeah, because after I told my friend that I thought he was cute, she um, immediately told her boyfriend like five seconds after I had said it. <laughs> <laughs> and so she went and told Keith too. And Keith was like, wait, where's Becky? Becky's cute. I'll hang out with Becky. And I had already like left. <laughs> so he messaged me. <laughs> Yeah, one of the first things he ever messaged me was actually that Tim Meadows song, Hey Bitch, Let Me Buy You Pizza. <gasps> no yeah. way. Yeah. You want to see something cool? He was like, you want to see something cool I did? And I was like, all right. And so <laughs> <laughs> he was like so proud of it. Yeah. And, and what did there, you think of it? Uh, it was kind of weird at first because it was just them playing. Like it was his friend Tins playing guitar and then they were singing. And I was like, oh, this is funny, but <laughs> kind of weird. Sure. <laughs> so we started playing Scrabble on mm-hmm. Facebook. And then I asked Keith, I was like, I'm turning 21 in May. It was like a month out at that point. I'm turning 21. Where should I go? And Keith's like, you should go to this bar. And it was like the bar that was down the street from his house, but it was in the city. So literally my dad dropped me and like five (gasps) friends off in the city. Oh, yeah. My parents, we call them Duber. Whenever I go back home and all my friends know that my dad will pick us up and drop us off from like (laughs) any bar he's like i can't sleep when you're not here i get worried (laughs) and he's like i'll just come get you i don't want you spending money on an uber i'll come get you duber so we call him duber sweet yes my dad drops us off we get to this bar and then guess who doesn't show up (gasps) but (laughs) no that was like your first date then it was supposed to be our first so you went to that bar because you knew he was gonna be there yes he had suggested it and then he's gonna be so mad I told this story because he's like you need to he's like you keep you make me feel bad when you tell this story and well I'm like, you should feel I'm bad like, well, it, ended, it ended well but I bring it up every year on my birthday because <laughs> I'm like remember and he's like Becky we're married <laughs> we're married <laughs> you're focusing on this you won <laughs> I know but so he um I texted him the next morning and I was like, what the fuck, man? <laughs> I was like, that's messed up. And he's like, I'm sorry. I went to this housewarming party and then, you know, time slipped away. He's like, come to Chicago again and we'll go have, you know, hot dogs. So we went and had hot dogs. And then our first kiss Romantic. was on his birthday. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, which is like two weeks after my birthday. Well, it's good that you like him. It was a different, different day. Okay. Yeah, it sounds like he really day. made you work for it. 
He did. He did. Yeah. And we're both, neither one of us is like super, not affectionate, but like, mm-hmm. I don't love hug. Man, you know, she always gets mad that I, I won't know. hug her. She, she misses hugs now. <laughs> I do miss hugs. Now. But Maggie and I will be like watching TV or something and she'll like come spoon me. And I'm like, I've never had this happen. It was like, somebody just <laughs> snuggles up on me. She loves it. Yeah. So I think when. I didn't yeah. find this out until, how long have we been friends? Like at least four years. I don't think at I found out that now. Becky didn't like hugs until like three years. And I, I come from a very affectionate family. So when I found out, I was like, oh, I feel so bad that I've been like coming on to you and you didn't, you don't you don't like it. Why didn't you tell me? I never, it always sounds bad if you're like, I don't like hugs. I know, but, just, but I got more used to it. I got more used to that it. That is a really weird thing. But to say. I, I've been more conscious of it when we're like before yeah. pre pre COVID and stuff. Yeah. But I I'm like, oh, I can't hug Becky. But bye. <laughs> I texted her once during quarantine. I was like, I changed my mind. I like hugs. <laughs> I feel like it's actually harder for Maggie not to hug than oh it is gosh. for Becky to accept a hug. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Uh, you know, I didn't know that. So now I'm starting to think about all the times that maybe I've hugged Becky. Me too. Unrequited hugs. See? See, it makes me feel so bad. She hasn't street. told me that, like, she didn't like it. <laughs> but I'm also, you know, I'm not like a... I'm not like a, 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 a hug attacker. Yeah. You know, you're I'm not like, like, come here. Yeah. Bring it in. <laughs> Bring it over here. Give me a hug. But it just feels so impersonal. Like, I hate goodbyes. So, like, hugs make it, like, more positive, you know? So, you're like, goodbye. Mm-hmm. <laughs> goodbye. I feel like I do the cheek hug, you know, where sometimes mm. I'll kind of, oh, I'll, yeah. like, grab somebody by the shoulder and kind of, like, just touch their cheek. <laughs> Is that okay? Is like, because that's not exactly yeah. a hug. That's yeah. just, like... A, a close touch. <laughs> I was just saying, well, being from the Midwest, everyone hugs. Yeah. That's like right. when Keith and I hang out with our friends from college, it's like you spend half the party hugging someone goodbye. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's, that's like true. hugging everyone. You're like, okay, bye. Bye. <laughs> bye. Bye. And then they're like, take some master <gasps> Take some master <laughs> So that's what you don't like. The goodbye train. <clears throat> yeah. I think it's the goodbye train. And then also like the forced. I don't know. Something about it seems like forced sometimes. I get that. But I'm, 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 you know, warming up on it now. But when Especially Keith and I first started. Now that we can't have it. Now that we can't have it. I'm like That's desperate rough. for a hug. It's rough. I'm like, I seriously, I, I, I cuddle my child. Like <laughs> you guys would not believe. I've actually taught him that like when we're reading books together, I say, okay, come cuddle, come oh. cuddle. And he'll, he'll, he'll like come up and sit next to me and I'll be like, no, no, no closer closer we're cuddling and then we're oh, really oh. really close he's getting really good at it Sugar. i'm so proud i'm so proud how what was you your long to... baby weekend oh, oh don't even ask we did potty training yeah 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 um <laughs> and so something that i didn't realize when we started potty training on friday which you know we had the friday off uh, or Ned had Friday off, mm. and uh, we never get days off because we have a child. Um, <laughs> but uh, we, so I had started reading this one book about potty training uh, to prepare myself, and I said, oh, "Okay, Ned, you should probably read this book so we can do this together." <laughs> um, and we had it on the Kindle, and I had pulled it up on the Kindle, and he and I had another. I, I downloaded another book like two months ago, thinking like maybe this is the book that I should read, but it's not the book that I did read. But it is the book that Ned read. Oh. So we read <laughs> two, different, two different books about potty training. Well, it's good. It's good. You can <clears throat> well, compare so, notes. But <laughs> we, we we go into this thinking we read the same book. And Ned's like, okay, so we're starting with underwear, right? And I was like, no, did you not read the book? We're starting with naked. And then he's going to learn what it feels like to pee on himself. <laughs> and, like, and Ned's like, well, I thought we were starting with underwear so that he learns what it's like to have a wet underwear. I was like, no, <laughs> it was very confusing. And it was very confusing for Wes at first too. It was, a, it was a tough day. Friday was a tough day because he did not understand what was going on. He was like, why am I naked? Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> why am I also sometimes wearing underwear? <laughs> why is my underwear broken? <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand. I don't understand. Um, but he, then we just went with naked because he kept, he kept peeing in his underwear because it's a lot like diapers. And um, he got really good at not peeing when he was naked. And so, you know, we got him to the toilet fast enough. But then on Sunday, we decided to start underwear because we were like, well, we can't do anything. We can, like, he can't even go outside because he's naked. You know, like there's, there are many people, 
there are people in our neighborhood who probably would not care that we had a naked child on our lawn, but there are some people who might, you know, you don't want, like, there were definitely people walking by at one point and they're like, that child is naked. Wes is like sunbathing. You know? <laughs> I don't know. I just have a, I don't know. Maybe it's like a weird thing that, that, you know, he doesn't care. I do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's what, that's strange. Maybe that's a strange thing that I have that I need to get over that like babies are naked. That's just it's what fine. they do. It's yeah. just what they do. Um, but then we tried underwear and it was mixed results on mm. Sunday. Mm. So we're still working on it. It's a it's a marathon, not a sprint. Who knew there was like such a science to potty training? But like, yeah. duh. And apparently there are books that are have wildly different like Opinions. theories about how to potty train a child. Huh. Yeah. Wow. We even asked our doctor and um, yeah, because we had no we had idea how to do this. Absolutely no idea how to do this. We've never potty trained a child before. I don't remember what it was like to be potty trained. I just remember being magically potty trained. Yeah. You know? And uh, and so we asked our doctor and she was like, yeah, just keep him in the diaper and just take him to the potty every once in a while. We've been doing that for two months and no, nothing no. has changed. And we still can't get him to like tell us when he needs to go to the bathroom or I don't know. And then... It, like people are saying, do it now, do it now, do it now. You can't wait because it's going to get harder and harder as he gets older and older. Mm-hmm. And you have all this time in the house. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. This is the best time to potty train. I feel like everybody I know that has like anywhere between one and three year olds is potty training now just because why, 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 why not? not? Why not? <laughs> At what yeah. point did you realize that you and Ned had read different books? How did you guys come to that understanding? <laughs> Pretty much immediately. <laughs> When I when he was like, yeah, it's chapter one, and I was like, no, it's not. <laughs> and then I and then I looked back and I was like, you read this book, didn't you? <laughs> Which is my fault because I was the one who handed it to him. I was like, here, read the read the the one that's on the Kindle, and there were two on the Kindle. Uh, Whoops. But at least yeah. you got time, you know. Yeah. yeah, we got plenty of time. You got plenty of time. We're gonna be home. And forever. he's only gonna make progress. You yeah, know? that's right. He can he's take his get better time. Better and better. And better. We're eventually gonna run out of candy. Um, Ooh, candy. what are you enticing? We are oh, little uh, mini M and M's, yogurt covered oh, yogurt. raisins. Good, 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 good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah which he thinks is candy. He doesn't actually know what candy is. Ooh. This child has maybe had chocolate once in his life, uh, because that the time that I gave him chocolate, he didn't. It's like he didn't sleep for days. <laughs> I swear to God, chocolate. He's like, and now, and and now, anytime he sees it, he calls it brown cookie. <laughs> <laughs> He says, brown, brown cookie, cookie, brown cookie. And I'm like, no, no, we're not going to have brown cookie. <laughs> That's brown so cookie. cute. Oh. Uh, I know. I know. He is. He is cute. He is precious. Just but... keep jumping up with the candy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good. I wish people would pay me in candy sometimes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I would not mind. I would like, I would love that. Yeah. My mom taught me how to swallow pills growing up with um, sprinkles. <gasps> Which was oh, really, that's I nice. loved swallowing pills. I was like, <laughs> you're like, sprinkles. Give them to me. <laughs> yeah. Cause she like didn't want to do like syrups anymore. Cause I would just spit them out. And, yeah. Oh, that makes sense. Wow. Sprinkles. I did speech therapy when I was little and they would give you um, candy for doing things correctly, really? for saying things correctly. Yeah. Huh. I, I mean, it was fun. If it works. <laughs> I loved it. And now if I don't have a lisp. <laughs> And, and you're now, cracked. I don't have and now I don't have a list. <laughs> and you're a sweets person. And I love candy. <laughs> <laughs> the best, best of all worlds. Oh, <laughs> it's a hive mind over here. I know, seriously. <laughs> What'd you do this weekend? Yeah, what'd you do? Oh, we actually puppy sat for the first time. Actually, the dog was three, three years old, but I was very nervous. I we've never had We call all dogs puppy. I know, we've on, on this oh, podcast. <laughs> but I was really nervous. We've never had another dog in the apartment before and like <clears throat> I never thought that I never really thought about it. And Bowie, he's really good with other dogs, but he can sometimes be too much. So I was just a little worried that he was going to be upset that there was another dog on my lap Mm. or on our bed or, but he did great. He like, I was convinced that he thought this dog was his baby. When they'd go out to walk, he'd walk like super slow next to her. And she was a very like, she was like Eugene's dog, Emma, just very nervous. But he did a great job. I'm so proud of him. And now I'm going to be able to uh, convince Zach to get another animal. Oh my gosh. (laughs) I did not realize that was the... That was the point of it this whole. The point. It was a test. <laughs> you say you want to get another animal. Does I don't know. That mean like a I cat? don't think we would mm. in the apartment that we're in now. But Zach and I are discussing cat. Maybe a another dog. dog. Maybe another. dog. I really want a tortoise. What? A tortoise. I don't, I don't think Bowie's gonna do great with a tortoise. I didn't tortoise. know. Bowie's gonna do great with a 
the tortoise. Two hundred years. <laughs> they do. <laughs> my my neighbor my had one growing up in their backyard, and it would just eat salad. <laughs> I loved him. It's a little salad, and they don't really like run away, you know, because you would catch them. <laughs> That's fair. I remember I used to live in an apartment where there was a house that was like around the corner that had a tortoise. And whenever we would go for walks, it's like, that's a house with a tortoise. Oh, like, so we're going to be those people? He lives, he lives in the front people. yard. Maybe you can see him. Like, just, just look in like the bushes or something. And every once in a while, you'd see the tortoise kind of walking around. <laughs> it's like that episode of Hey Arnold. The, that episode of what? Hey Arnold. Do you remember that uh-huh. episode? Uh-huh. What was the turtle's name? There was like this. Arnold had a tortoise? No, he like went to the zoo and the tortoise had something like spray painted on him. Nobody what? nobody knows this? Uh-uh, I don't no. remember that episode. I loved Hey Arnold. I'm pretty sure it's real. Miles, Google it. There was, it had a cute name too. And there was a song that played. Like it was almost like it was like a show pony of a tortoise. Did you it write had, a, did you a find script it? for it Hey had Arnold? It had graffiti? Yeah, yeah someone graffitied. Lockjaw. Lock 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 yeah. <laughs> and it would do like a song and be like, Lockjaw. And the light would go on and then someone like spray painted it. Oh. I don't remember the point of the episode. I don't know. I think it was probably supposed to teach you not to abuse animals. But <laughs> probably. Probably. A good but lesson. I, yeah. You. That's what I think of tortoises. That's what I think of. No, <laughs> Lockjaw. Gosh, hey, Arnold. That's a that's a flash from the past. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I miss hey, good, Arnold. I, it was a good time. I saw your face and wow. <laughs> Do you remember that? Oh. oh God! Well, that was just all like Hey Arnold references that nobody else are getting. Um, you don't remember that guy? Was it a singer? <laughs> yes, it was like, sang? That song was a little bop. I only remember um, Stoop Kid. Stoop Kid's oh, afraid to leave. Stoop. stoop. Rach, I think I think we're like we're like, too old. We're, we're like four or yeah. five years older than they are. So <laughs> we are. I like I remember Hey Arnold, but I don't remember watching it. I remember we're watching terrible. Ren and Stimpy. Yeah. Yes. Oh yeah. That but that that was sort of like the precursor to Hey Arnold. I feel mm-hmm. like what so, was uh, Ren and Stimpy. Oh, okay. Ren and Stimpy was like dirty. It was dirty. It was. Yeah, I know. It was disgusting. The, the, the funny balls. thing was, like, kids loved it so much, and parents never watched it, so parents didn't know that it was <laughs> nasty. <laughs> that was me, like, discovering Rocco's Modern Life on Cartoon Network as a child. Mm-hmm. Wasn't that Rocco. like a dirty sh- show too? I remember I watched the nudist episode, and my mom was like, "What are you watching?" And I was like, uh, "Cartoon Network." <laughs> Definitely an odd. Yeah, Cartoon Network, I feel like, had a lot of good ones. What were you guys like when you were, like, teens? Probably insufferable, I assume. <laughs> we're, uh, <laughs> I'm told. Didn't you? Uh, I'm told pretty insufferable. Wait, you told us recently I that you teen. were trying to convince your mom to, like, call you Tiffany or something? You tried to convince Wait. your mom to call you something. Bex. Bex. Oh, I tried okay, for Bex. Bex. Yeah, Bex was the one I tried. <laughs> um, no, I was pretty loud the same way I am now. <laughs> I think I told my dad likes to tell a story how I would tell him that if I kept a thought in my head, it hurt. <laughs> like my parents would be like, Becky, you can like, you don't have to oh. say everything that comes to your mind. And I'd be like, it hurts. It hurts. It hurts if I don't. Oh my God. And I, I was such to. a tattletale. Oh. I love rules. Love Interesting. Them. Love learning rules. And then seeing like how I to abide like by those I feel like you're the complete rules. opposite now. Yes, I've turned into a little anarchist. Yeah. <laughs> but when I was little, but in a good way. Loved it. Yeah, but you even were, like I would say it comes from like the even like you know caring about the environment or um, different causes. I feel like that comes from like a set of rules. Like you're mm-hmm. like this is how the world is supposed to That's work. Fair. It's not working that way. Fix it. Right. <laughs> right. But when I was little, it was like. And the like actual but you're rules actually are broken. Yes. So you're like, here's what we need to do. Yeah. yeah. But I would straight up tattletale. And you're kids thinking all the critically time. about the rules. <laughs> yeah. What's mm-hmm. wrong with these rules? What's yeah. working? What's not working? Hmm. When I was little, it was like, this is the rule. You broke it. I'm telling. I'm telling. <laughs> and my parents were like, not everything is <laughs> important. <laughs> Sometimes people can break the rules and it's okay. Which my brother's the exact opposite. He is so quiet, so reserved. He's like painfully quiet. I think I used to be <laughs> a lot more quiet than I am now. I yeah. definitely gravitate to a group of friends when I open up to people, but I went to an all girls like Catholic high school. Um, I was never really outspoken. I didn't want to make anybody angry. Yeah, my graduating class was actually. 80 girls, uh-huh. which wow. is completely different from what a lot of other people grow up in. But I can yeah. sense there's like some girls that I work with now, like you can sense when another girl goes to an all Catholic 
Really? Like an all-girls school. Like, what like, are the telltale signs? I don't know. I think there's just like an aura about that. I'm like, oh, did you go to an all-girls high school? And they're like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, That's it's fascinating. That's yeah. funny. I want to know how to tell. I know. I know. What's the tell? Well, I Emily, you had an interesting high school experience. Yeah. I mean, so like I basically, so I, I grew up in Texas, but when I was going from middle school to high school, we moved to London. Um, mm. And my dad had been like working in, in Europe uh, for years before he was in like uh, Rotterdam for a while and like, you know, so in the Netherlands and in Spain. Um, and he, he got this job in, in London and, uh, it was just the right time. Like my sister was going from elementary school to middle school. I was going from, uh, middle school to high school. And we were just in a place where like my mom was ready to move. We were like, let's do it. Let's, let's become expats. And so we did. (laughs) And, I remember the first summer that we were there, I had a, like both my sister and I had really close groups of friends when we were living in Texas. Um, we were like Texas girls. And, um, and so we had no friends when we oh, moved to London oh. because we moved at the beginning of the summer and we had no idea what to do with ourselves. And oh. at that time, my sister and I hated each other. Uh, oh, that is not the case crazy. anymore. We are best friends. Probably because of this summer where oh. it was me, my mom, and my sister, because my dad was working all the time, and uh, my mom was just like, okay, we're going to get you guys ready to be British. <laughs> you're you're going to be British now. So, so you're going to start drinking, and we're going to travel. So the three of us... We're going to start drinking? Yeah, we started drinking. Because how old were you guys? I, I was uh, 16. Okay. Maybe okay. fifteen. What? T- uh-huh. How old do they start drinking in the 16. UK? Sixteen. Oh wow! You can you can you can drink wine uh, and beer at sixteen, and you can actually drink uh, with your parents at a, like a restaurant at fourteen. Wow! Holy crap. Yeah. yeah. At least at the time, I think those were the rules. I might have that wrong. That, that, those may just That's be like insane. the rules. I I my head. Head. <laughs> you guys all know my mom. She is the <laughs> queen of like the overpour. You know, <laughs> as much as I love her, I mean, it's it's like. That's just part of her personality. She's just mm-hmm. like, well, why would I? Why would I give you like one shot when you can have three now and not come back for more later? I love her so <laughs> <You know>? much. <laughs> She's so silly. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, so we, we we were traveling Europe that summer, which like my sister and I were brats. We were such brats that summer. We were like, why do we have to do this? It's hot. It's boring. And now I think back on it, and I'm like, that was the greatest time of my life. Like, what? I was yeah. 16 years old. How cool. I was traveling yeah, that's neat. With my par- like, with my mom and my sister. But, oh, my gosh, we were so <clears throat> terrible to my mom. And, like, ugh, just just such brats. And, uh, like, my sister and I were always at each other's throats. But then when we finally got to go to school in the fall, it was a very small school. It was, like, an American school in London. Mm-hmm. I think May, uh, my graduating class was, like, 98 kids. And, um, I got, and of the 98 people that graduated when I like started in high school, there were 19 other new kids. So it was, it was not abnormal that like kids would come and go. And so, Mm. you know, there were these 19 other freshmen who were coming in who were brand new. Some of them were from, you know, my best friend was from Singapore, uh, and then there were a couple of other people who came from Texas. <laughs> we were wow, like, oh, that's wild. Texas. Some people from California. There were some people from like Saudi Arabia, you know, but like everybody had been, most of the people that were like coming in had either been from America or had been going to uh, American run schools. Um, so it was, it was a very, it was an interesting world. It was an interesting world. Um, it was also a very wealthy school and there were so many drugs. Really? <laughs> like as a freshman, I, I I mean, I was this sheltered uh d- child from, you know, like suburban Texas. And and like I remember somebody at a house party being like, you know, do you want to come do cocaine? And I was like, <laughs> huh? Um, as a 16-year-old? No. Thanks. <laughs> My mom I'm just good. introduced me to wine. I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. One vice at a time, Blue. Yeah. <laughs> it was nuts. It was nuts. It was a it was a a kick in the pants for real. You know, mm-hmm. I feel like I grew up real fast. Um, and I had just like gotten my driver's license in Texas, and so I had just tasted that that like little bit of of independence that that 
uh, that American kids get. And when we moved to London, like at this point, kids are going to the pub by themselves. Like they, I, I, they take the, like the tube everywhere. Nobody yeah. drives. Mm-hmm. And so you're, you're independent at like 12. And, and so, you know, all these people who had already been there, I'm like, oh my God, they are so cool. <laughs> they're so cool because they're like adults already mm-hmm. and so i had to quickly grow up yeah um how and, frustrated uh, were you that you had just gotten your driver's license to move to uh oh, london where everyone drives on the opposite I side of the road terribly frustrated <laughs> i guess you had public transit so yeah, yeah yeah and we would we would come back to the states every summer uh and spend the summers with my grandparents <laughs> and um and i could drive then oh okay yeah mm. so how I long would. did you live in london Four years. Yeah. And then I took a gap year uh, mm. because I wasn't ready to move back to the States. Mm. <laughs> I wasn't ready to move back to the States yet. So I took a year off in between high school and college. Um, and then I and then I went to college and basically lived in the States since then. Well, how yeah. cool that you were able to do that. That's like one of my biggest regrets was not being able to travel abroad. Or I know. Yeah. I, th- I, I think about it now and, and it's like a blip. Because it was only five years, you know, mm-hmm. but only, I, I know only five <laughs> years, but it was, it was such a, it was like a time in your life when there are so many other things changing that you don't even, you know, you don't even really think about how awesome it is that you're where you are, mm-hmm. you know, like I was just trying to be a teenager. Yeah. Um, and, and, and there are definitely times when I feel a little bit out of place um, like you guys will talk about, Hey Arnold or something like that. There'll be something that happened in high school with people who are my age. And I'll be like, I don't know what that is. Like, like a, like a song or a TV show that I didn't get that I never mm-hmm. saw. Trying to think of what my friends from high school would say about me. I think that I had the appearance that I could do no wrong, but like, I was also a little troublemaker. Cause you have an mm-hmm. angel face. Yeah. Naughty underneath. Yeah. I was a very, did you ever get in trouble for something? I got many detentions <gasps> many what? in Rebel. high school for wearing <laughs> ankle socks. <laughs> what? Oh, instead of you had a uniform. Knee socks. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then I, the all girls Catholic high school that I went to wanted your skirts to be like a little bit below your knee and they <gasps> would put like an embroidery down there so you couldn't hem your skirts like towards like the last two years that I was going there, but I would get in trouble for having a short skirt. How did you shorten it? My mom would hem it or I would roll it. Yeah. I used to roll my skirts. Yeah. After my mom, like, couldn't, my mom's like, we can't hem the skirts anymore, Maggie. But I was, they were so big. Um, yeah. But yeah. They don't make them to go below your knee. They make them they to do. go here. No. They were <gasps> below our, like, it was like right at the knee. They were, they were terrible. They in, were terrible. in middle school, we had to wear. I used uh, to hate my uniform. And now that I just hate <laughs> getting ready in the morning, it was nice to not have to worry about that. Mm-hmm. Do you in. do you feel like you have but a uniform I hated now? It. I do you hate feel, it. Do you feel like you you like have something that you wear every day? Yeah. You have like a uniform? Yeah. I think mine's like leggings and just like a basic top. Our high school had I we went to a Catholic school, so you didn't but in London did they have the same like Oops, wildly sexist rules about what girls could wear versus what boys could wear? No, gosh, at this school you could wear whatever the F you wanted. Oh, really? So yeah. nice. Yeah. Like, s- seriously, it was nuts because in middle school, I had to wear a, um, a uniform. It mm-hmm. was it, it was basically, you could wear like one of four different color polo shirts and then you had to wear khaki bottoms. That's mm-hmm. exactly like what we had to wear. And so, but but like, they weren't quite as strict about the length of your your skirt or, mm-hmm. um, or, your, or your shoes. So normally people would just wear like, you know, uh, tennis shoes. Mm. So oh, it, okay. it, yeah, it was, it was all, it was all a little looser down in Texas, <laughs> but, <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, when, when I went off to high school, I mean, since, um, you know, again, like girls would come with like very expensive bags <clears throat> and, you know, things like that. And so like very, there were, there were certain people who dressed extremely, extremely well. And then there were certain people who were just like, like, F this, I, you know, I'll, I'll wear whatever I want. And so it was, it was a weird, weird time because I was also, I came to London with like all of my American clothes and English clothes and European clothes fit differently. And so you can always tell who's an American and who is oh. like wearing European clothes. It's, is it because it's the way it fits? It's the way it fits. Yeah, American clothes are, are a lot more boxy. Um, especially, yes, yeah. especially for like teenagers. Mm. Um, I don't know. It's, it's a, it was a very, like, I guess as a, as a teenager, I wore a lot of like gap, 
you know, and things like that. And they have Gap in Europe, mm. but the clothes are completely different. Huh. Yeah, they're oh. cut differently. It's really How would you categorize your style? This is like early 2000s, right? Yeah. Oh, oh gosh. Yeah. What did I even... I can't even remember what I wore. I probably Who was wore famous the same in early thing. 2000s? Like Paris Hilton? Mm-hmm. Nicole Britney Spears? Ritchie? Yeah. I, like, but I, I was not like... I did not show a lot of skin. I definitely did not show skin. I was like long sleeve t-shirt and jeans probably. Like mm-hmm. I'm trying to remember like my favorite outfit... And it was probably a pair of boot cut jeans and <laughs> and like a solid color t-shirt. You know, like I had zero style. Absolutely no style. I mean, it, arguably I still have zero style. That like I not no. true. I wear I I look to Maggie and I look yeah, to yeah. Rachel and I look to Becky. <laughs> she lets me I'm laugh. Like, She's what like, are, what, what are they wearing? Not this you know? one. <laughs> I remember when we were in Australia and Maggie walks into this, uh, this store, you walked into the seed and, oh, yeah. and, and Maggie bought like a couple of things. And I was like, okay, all right, let's, I'll go check it out. Ooh. Sure. In Ariel's defense, she picked out the same three things that I had bought. And, and I was like, I bought those too. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> I was, so she I was really trying to go style. out of my comfort zone because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> my comfort zone is jeans and a t-shirt like that you're owning it you're owning it girl Uh, i do need to own it i do need to own it and and i think in my old age i have (laughs) i have grown into my myself you know i sometimes wear things other than black Mm -hmm. uh but only sometimes you have that one blue dress i have that one i like that blue dress that's a good one sometimes like if i'm gonna be on camera then i like have to think to myself Ariel, don't wear black. Uh, <laughs> maybe wear the one pink shirt that you have or the one green mm-hmm. shirt. So for all of you out there who have seen me in colors, She's know really that trying. when I am home and just being myself, I am wearing all black. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just because it is what I'm the most comfortable in and it is what I have the most of. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was, that was my style. I truly, I do not remember. I blocked it from my memory. Fine. That's fine. You think they could tell that you are American right away? 100%. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> haircuts, too. Haircuts are completely different. Uh. Yeah. Like, I, European haircuts are so much more edgy looking. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And, and as, as a teenager, you, <clears throat> like, you fixate on these things. You know, you, you fixate on the, the way that you are different from everybody else. And you think, how can I assimilate to mm. to this culture? You know, and so I need the... I need the the better cut clothing. I need the cooler haircut. I need the, you know, I truly, I, uh, I joined the rowing team and that sort of became my life at that, at that point. A big oh, rower. Yeah, 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 I was, yeah. I was on the rowing team. I was on the rowing team. What I, position? Uh, I was, I was one of the tallest people and one of the strongest people. So I was, uh, usually in the middle of the boat. I was like four or five, six, yeah. um, yeah. But, uh, my true claim to fame is that I recruited my sister. Uh, who within two weeks of her being a freshman on the rowing team uh, was better than me. And she <laughs> went off to be recruited for rowing in college. Wow. Whoa, Danny. I know. I know. So I, I, I was always a uh, second fiddle at rowing. My sister, she's taller and stronger and just <laughs> better at that. Just better. Do you guys remember what you thought when you all first met each other? Do you remember like what you thought of each other? I met Becky. <laughs> you remember Maggie. You remember. I met Becky the night I met Zach. <gasps> yeah. I that was always the first wanted to hear this story in its entirety. <laughs> True love times two. I don't know if we have yeah. time for the because entirety all of the story. I heard <laughs> was that you and Maggie Zach met at a we diner. No, no, no. Gay at bar, a diner, baby. Yeah, we met at a gay bar. Eugene, Keith, Zach, and I think you guys had gotten. You, you guys, guys had, had already gone left. Well, yeah, yeah. I knew that we were there that night, but. Ned and I go to bed early, even yeah, before we had know. kids. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't get to meet Ned and Ariel yet, but I met Keith, Becky, Eugene, and Zach all on the same night. Yeah. So I, I had a, Matt was there. T- was Matt there? Matt was not there. He was he traveling was for work at the time. So I met. <sighs> Set the stage. What was Set it? The stage. <laughs> Where oh. were you? What was happening? So I had an out of ten. A, well, I had a friend visiting from out of town, from Seattle, and she had just gotten out of a serious relationship with her boyfriend. And she, she's like, I want to go out to the bars, but I don't want to deal with Santa Monica 
single man because <laughs> she was on the Who she was does? on the apps and she was like I don't like it. Don't she was like on it. the prowl. She, the she wasn't on the prowl. She's like I just want to go out and have fun, but I don't want to deal with sleazy men. I was like okay, well, we can go to like the gay bars. You haven't been to this part of town before, so let's go. And let's you're go out single. Here. I was single. I had been single for a while, and I was known as like the chronically single friend out of my Aww. college friend group. So I How just was interesting. So, I know. I thought you ended up with the other chronically single person. I know. So <laughs> they were just waiting. Yeah. Just waiting. Yeah. Literally so just waiting literally for the bathroom. Not searching. <laughs> I had just like deleted the apps off of my phone. The and I was apps. like, whatever. Mm. You're just you gonna do over me. It. <laughs> yeah. So I met up with some coworkers at the Abbey and then me and my friend showed up and we were actually in line for the bathroom. And you know how when you're in the bathroom, you automatically make friends with other girls that are in line for the bathroom or you, you just like compliment each other's outfits and <laughs> of course talk mm-hmm. about yeah. literally anything. Yeah. Share perfume. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> so what? Snacks. Yeah. Snacks. Gum. <laughs> Gum. Lip gloss. Yeah. Different times. Um, <laughs> Tampons. Yeah. Tampons. But um, the girl that was next to us in line and the way that this gay bar set up, there was it was like unisex line, I think mm. it was to go to the like two to bathrooms the, two and, bathroom, you just and it was like shared them. sinks mm-hmm. or somehow. And the girl standing next to us in line that we had made friends with were talking to Keith and Zach, I believe. And so they were being lunatics and <laughs> I was just standing <laughs> behind them. And I think Zach looked at me and was like, she seems normal. I want to talk to her. These other girls are crazy. <laughs> what were they doing? Uh, they recognized him, right? I don't, I didn't know who Zach was for that. At least like the first two months that we were dating. But somebody that you were with. I think so. But she was talking to Zach initially. So I wasn't, I didn't hear their conversation. Okay. Um, Eugene and I are out like dancing. dancing. We're like getting a drink, and he yeah. I was like, "Where's Zach?" Because Keith was walking back from the bathroom, and we we're both like, huh, "Probably making out with some girl," and like <laughs> as a full on hundred percent joke, right? Right. <laughs> and then what? At the time, that's the funniest thing in the world. It was. It was like the joke. We were like, so we're like, ha probably finding a girl at the gay bar," and then we like look over, and then and indeed he has found a girl. <laughs> And I thought and Mackin. And no. no. <laughs> and then no. I saw Wait, what? No. You guys no. were not making out by the bathroom. You did. Liar! <laughs> <laughs> Look at her. She's been <laughs> caught. <laughs> She's been caught. I did not. You want kissed her when you Zach first kissed met her. her. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Do you see how she tried to deny it? <laughs> Lies. You so were seen, Maggie. You've been outed. So we were, like, oh yeah, it wasn't in a bathroom. So not we like in a stall. In line, <laughs> and then we like exited the line, and then we talked more. Zach was talking to me about cats. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know. So slow. You were yes. so in it. And you were like, I love cats. No. <laughs> Zach like asked for my number and Shannon's like, don't be mean. He's so <clears throat> nice. Like, don't, don't be. Already sp- made out with yeah. him. Go on a date. Go on a date. Go on a date like, with okay, the boy. Okay, I'll go on a date. And we I had it. so hard much to go fun. out on a date with someone you meet like randomly. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. it was just like, yeah. my mom had always like pressed this, uh, narrative into my head like you don't date anyone you meet at a bar anyone you meet at a bar is not looking like they don't care about you they don't care about who you are personally you weren't at a normal bar (laughs) (laughs) but yeah we ended up going on like a couple dates and I really liked him so that's kind of how but back to how Becky and I (laughs) met I'm I'm not you guys are all making me deflect anyway she's blushing (laughs) um for someone <laughs> whose friend was missing for over like 45 minutes, she was probably one of like the nicest people. Because usually <laughs> girls are, I would expect girls to be very overprotective of their friends, especially, no, especially we were like, sweet little Zach. <laughs> <laughs> we're like, get it, bro. You got this. <laughs> but yeah, and you guys were so nice. It was Maggie and Shannon. 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 If you Shannon. watch Lost, you'll get that. Yeah. Reference. But. but they were a blast. I just remember everyone being so sweet and welcoming. Eugene included, Keith included, <coughs> Becky included. So you guys were drinking, dancing. Dancing. The Abbey was really, we've been back to the Abbey mm-hmm. since then, and we don't even understand how we were able to have a conversation. It is so yeah. aggressively loud and crowded and crowded. sweaty. And <laughs> Also, I mean, you probably heard 20% of, the, of what you were, of, of what Zach was it saying, but it was the 20% that you wanted to hear. <laughs> 
<laughs> I know. No. Single ears mm-hmm. can hear more than coupled ears. You're like, yeah. I can't hear. We got to go home. What? <laughs> what? But if you're single, you're like, oh, tell me more about yeah. that. <laughs> no. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> you are so embarrassed. I'm so embarrassed. I feel called out. <laughs> Cute. Our first date. Where do we go on our first date? Oh, this is a funny story. So Zach, uh, we talked like the first night we met. We were like, oh, we love ramen. And he's like, I have this place I want to take you to. And so we went there and we had ramen first. And then we wanted to keep hanging out. So we both lied about being lactose. Zach has a dairy allergy. I'm lactose intolerant. But we went to an ice cream shop. <laughs> we didn't know what to do after our second date or like our main event of dates. So what do you do? You go get ice cream. We go get ice cream. Even if you don't ever eat ice cream. Uh-huh. Yeah. And they're then, both like suffering through. They're like, this is going to be painful this is later. So good. <laughs> this is so good. But and so then, yummy. Uh, we still wanted to keep hanging out and talking after ice cream. So we went to a tea shop. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Oh, but at that point, the ice cream was starting to hit. And yeah. so you were so like, like, I have to go, go down. down. We're like, we gotta go. <laughs> down. We gotta go. Yeah. <laughs> Maggie, you have a really good um, early dating. I don't know if you want to share this story. What story? About what you found in the pillow. <gasps> oh, oh, my God. God. That sounds sinister. Oh, my God. You don't God. have to. I think it's a we really can funny story. <laughs> I think it's, oh, it might be Zach's story to tell. No, oh, it is yours. No, I think it's yours. He has time, time to tell the story. Oh, my God. Okay. He can tell what whatever he find? wants. Yeah. I think this was one of, like, the first couple times I had spent the night at Zach's old apartment, and he lived with his two, one of his childhood best friends from New York, and then another friend that also grew up in the same town. And then setting the scene for Zach's old apartment. Oh, yeah, Becky, right, go we've off. We've all seen their new beautiful oh God, apartment. Mm. Zach's old apartment was this college Disgusting. den. There was the bathroom dis- downstairs had saloon doors. It didn't even have a real door. <laughs> and sometimes they would lock and you'd get trapped. So at parties, I'd be like, Zach, I'm going to go pee in your room. And he's like, okay. And I would go upstairs and then crawl over like piles of clothes just junk it was and like toys a frat house yeah they had the really nice backyard and they had the, and they had like an enormous television oh, that was yeah. always on always and like marathoning. blasting music fast and the furious it was like a true like bachelor pad yes. Yes. many fun memories to be yes. had in the yes. bachelor pad yes they were all a blast <laughs> yeah but, but, but i do prefer housing peeing situation in apartment yes. oh yeah <laughs> For sure. What was in the pillow? Yeah, what? So what upstairs pillow? you go to Zach's room. So you go upstairs and it was one of the first times I had spent the night there. And anytime that same day, I noticed that anytime the AC would come on, there would be this smell. And it was like during the day before we had go, gone to bed and it almost smelled like a plastic... I don't know what it was. I was like, Zach, what is that smell? <laughs> He's like, oh, I don't know. Maybe it's like something with, maybe we need to change the vents. And I was like, okay, whatever. So we're still <laughs> hanging out. We're watching movies. We're about to go to bed. The AC comes back on because Zach turns it on before he goes to sleep. And I'm sleeping on his like jersey sheets pillow. And I'm like trying to find a comfy spot. And I like, my hands are like touching the pillow, readjusting. Oh, dear God. <laughs> I'm, so I'm patting scared. and I'm patting and I'm patting. What is it? And what is it? Becky knows and she's find this going bel- weird plastic. I'm like, Zach, there's something in here. And the lights are all off. Zach goes, oh, shit. <laughs> he grabs the a giant black dildo and <laughs> chucks it at the window outside of his room. What? What? <laughs> what? 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 Yes. And yes. Smell? And it smelled like just like latex. But it was of like course. it was like it was angled like the AC was hitting Wait. the plastic of it and like wafting the smell. Oh my god. So context, I guess he did like a lonely island shoot. shoot. And he had all, like, they were giving away all these dildos. Oh, my God. Oh my God. Just, and so Zach being Zach. He was, was like, like, yeah, I'll take one. Okay. I'll take one. I can use these in a video later. <laughs> yeah. So he kept them for future In his use. bed? No, but, no, no. It, but him and his roommates had, like, this joke. Like, they would have, like, toys and stuff that they would pass back and forth. So, like his roommate Vito would just like put it on the door and it would just be like shaking and stuff or like one of them would pack it in their suitcases so when they would like oh travel God. out of town they'd open it and like go home to their parents yeah and it would just be there 
But I was just like, ho- Zach was like horrified and like he didn't want to talk about it for five minutes. And I was like freaking out. I'm like, what is like, what is that's that? Like, that's like the worst reaction to have when your like new he girlfriend finds a huge he dildo so in your bed he so and he doesn't want to talk mad. about it. He was so mad. <laughs> but we laugh about it now. Remember the first time I heard I almost peed myself? Because I just imagined, like, sweet, <laughs> sweet, angelic Maggie Zach, there's something holding a giant here. dildo and, like, screaming the dark, in the dark. dark. <laughs> oh, my God. I could see, like, the like, it was pitch black dark, but I could see, like, a light bulb in Zach's head, like, oh, my God, I know what it is. <laughs> it was something else. <clears throat> wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's, oh wow! I, I know. I'm so glad you guys recovered from that moment. I know the shame. I know. That brings <sighs> up another memory that I had when my sister first found out that, oh my God. like, I didn't tell my parents who I was dating for a long time. <laughs> similarly to you, Becky, because I didn't <clears throat> want to tell them unless it was yeah. something who was serious. So I told my sister, and my sister proceeds to screenshot a photo of Zach in the vagina costume and forward it to my family thread, <gasps> and, oh, and was like. <laughs> This is who Maggie's dating. (laughs) She's dating the clitoris. I was like, (laughs) oh my god. Why would she do that? I know, that's so weird. Because she's a little meanie head. (laughs) Is she younger or older? She's three years younger than me. Yeah, that's Ivana. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So many good stories of when we first started dating. Seriously. Oh, it's so funny. It's fun to think back. It's been a while. I know, I'm excited for this podcast because... I am so bad at remembering like past stories unless you like prompt me to like tell you tell the audience about yeah. certain things like I forget I need to start like journaling or doing something because there's so well, many good Becky's stories. Becky's like an elephant she remembers everything she really does you really that do culture mind you got to be able to something up here <laughs> I don't know how to do math but I can remember I will song. tell you a thing that you did yeah. three years ago and I'll tell you what I did in third grade that yeah I'm still embarrassed by. <laughs> that's why oh we love having God. you around <laughs> that's so true oh man so when did you guys first meet Ariel, then, would be mm. the question. You guys met at the Abbey. Yeah, the, you yeah. guys met at the Abbey. I don't... When did I meet you, Maggie? How old is Bean? How old is Bean? Yeah. Four. I feel like me... I feel like I went to your house for a brunch, because the mm-hmm. Fulmers love hosting brunch <clears throat> at their <throat> house. I think it was either close to when you got Bean, uh-huh. if not like a month before you had gotten Bean. That sounds right. I remember the outfit I picked because I was so nervous to meet you, you guys. You were so nervous. Yeah. I was so nervous to meet the remainder of friends. Cause, oh. Oh. Yeah. I, I do remember being nervous to meet you too because all that I had heard were these snippets <laughs> of like, you know, Zach met a girl. Like he, they, they met it. Like you, 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 you almost were there Ariel you almost were there you would have met her if you hadn't gone home <laughs> you know, kicking myself and 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 then yeah and then Zach like kept it under wraps for so long mm-hmm. because he was we bugged like, him a lot he was mm-hmm. the he was this this like perpetually single guy on mm-hmm. BuzzFeed mm-hmm. you know and so he couldn't talk about it but mm-hmm. he would talk about it with us and so it's like well, when are we gonna meet maggie when are we gonna meet maggie yeah. yeah you know i remember for the longest time too with maggie and matt remember when we would take pictures together and i'd be like i we can't post picture. it or oh, i'd like man. i started like with when maggie and i started hanging out more and we would have these pictures i would just like randomly post them with no context <laughs> i would be like people could just think this is my friend just a friend why does my this friend have anything just a friend zach you know why does anybody. matt have anything to do with eugene i can just throw him in there I'm pretty, sure, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure the audience knew. Yeah, they knew immediately. They're like, "Is Zach dating somebody? Is Eugene dating somebody?" You, when I met Keith, you were still living mm-hmm. in Chicago. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I remember yeah. that Keith had this longtime girlfriend oh. that he would always talk about, and he's like, "Becky and I are going to get married." You know, like Keith moved to California without you. Yeah, and it was actually we weren't long time dating at that. We had only dated <gasps> for about a year. You guys lived apart for like a year. Yeah, so we did long distance for a year. Yeah, because Keith's three years older than me. And at the time, I still wanted to be an actor. So I was like, I, I had just graduated college. I was like, I'm yeah. not moving to L.A. this year. I'll go next year. Yeah. But I mean, we definitely like almost broke up before he moved. I was mm. like, you can't just wait one year for me. <laughs> Why? <laughs> That's a fair question. Yeah. That is a fair question. One There's- little year. One whole year, yeah. And my parents were, which my parents love Keith, but it was like the one time where they're like, are you 
Like, is this, is this real it? Deal? Are you sure? Because like you're young and you're, you know, you've now made this life plan to move next year and you're going to wait for him here is, are you sure this is what you want? Right. And then we're like, yeah, it's yeah. fine. <laughs> it's fine. But yeah, it was a, <clears throat> I think we met at the holiday party. I think we met at the holiday party, the BuzzFeed holiday party. Yeah. The one at the Roosevelt. Yeah. Well, you reminded me of this just like before we started this, because I was like, I don't remember yeah, when we like met. My, my first memory of Ariel was like, <laughs> she like knocked a plate off a table or I had a, I, something. I had a full plate of food. Yeah. Because I do not, I, I, like, I don't mess around with mm-hmm. buffets. Like, <laughs> I don't when, mess when around. We are, when, mm-hmm. when there is a buffet to be had, <laughs> I'm not going through the line again. All right, I'm filling out my plate with everything I want. Just like your mom, take three shots That's now. Right. Don't come back That's for right. more. See, I learned from the best. Mom values. And then, so and then I go and I find my spot and I <clears throat> chow down. <laughs> chow you know? down. Like, and I don't have to eat everything on my plate that I got, but I normally do. So <laughs> here I am with an entire, like a fully full plate of food. Mm-hmm. And then Becky, of course, comes over to our table. Yeah, Matt was there too. Mm-hmm. It was like all our first little yeah. thing. I don't remember how the food fell, but my first memory is food on I the floor. I was probably drunk. Yeah. Oh, I, I <laughs> think I threw up after that holiday party. Yeah. There was, I mean. The, the booze uh, was. Usually when, when it's an open <laughs> bar, especially before we had kids, I was, I was like five in by the time that the food came out. Well, we were so nervous. I feel like every time I went to one of those parties or like a work event, I was like. You had to be like bubbly. And, and everyone's like, what do you do? And I'm like, I'm a waitress. <laughs> I'm a waitress. You were a waitress. <laughs> and I was like. They would like want to know Although, more about it. And I'm like, bring food to table. At the, the time, at the time I, think you were, I think you were still in your first job. Oh, shit. I, was, I think you were at Sprinkles. You were at Sprinkles. Okay, so you made here's cupcakes. The thing. Here's the thing. She sold cupcakes. So I, I was always in restaurants when I was younger. And then when I moved to LA, I was like, fuck it. I, I'm never working in a restaurant again. I was like, I, you know, I, the money was great, but I felt like it was doing something to my insides. And I was like, I can't, I can't do it. So like a month passes, I cannot find another job. I'm trying to like apply for like temp jobs or yeah. like office jobs, but literally all of my experience is serving and hosting. So finally one day I looked on Craigslist and the sprinkles at the Americana <laughs> brand <laughs> was doing an open call. An and open casting yes. call. So wow. I went and I was um, the second oldest person that worked there. Everyone oh. else was like 18. <laughs> And I worked there for, uh, I think, like six six to eight months, uh-huh. maybe. And then um, I immediately found a restaurant job because I was like, <laughs> Give it's all here. the same. And if, it, if I'm going to be demeaned, it better be for much more money than I'm making right, right now. Yeah. yeah. But I remember at the time... <laughs> At the time, Sprinkles was like a really big deal. Yeah. Like yeah. Sprinkles cupcakes were in. I they remember were, when that ATM so came trendy. out. Mm-hmm. They were super were trendy, trendy at the time. And so I thought you were really cool. <laughs> I, I used like, to bring them all the she time too. I would bring like a dozen cupcakes. That red everywhere. velvet. Oh, they're like $5 yeah. each. They're, they're not cheap. They're not cheap. Yeah. And they're cool. Mm-hmm. They're like cool looking. Yeah. And that's pretty good. I had like, I, I had an office job at the time and like we would have Sprinkles cupcakes all the time. Yeah. And it's like, oh my God, she works at Sprinkles. <laughs> but it was always so weird saying it to people who were like, I'm a video producer. I'm an editor. I'm a, it sounded like there were all these like important jobs. And Did I you like, say I work I'm at Sprinkles or were you person. like, I'm a, I'm a cupcake engineer. <laughs> a cup, yeah. I'm a cup, I don't know. I think I would just say I work at Sprinkles, but I'm going to be an actor or something like that. That makes sense. Well, anywho, you came over and I oh, think yeah. I was chatting with Matt or I don't know. So Sorry. somehow an entire plate of food fell on the floor. Mm-hmm. Your I, plate. I believe it was my plate. It, it could have been, plate. it could have been anybody's plate. Yeah. Uh, but like huge plate of food just <clears throat> toppled onto the floor. Mm-hmm. And I think all of us sort of stood there stunned for like <sighs> 10 seconds. And then I lifted up the, uh, the tablecloth and just kicked it under the table <laughs> <laughs> and dropped it. <gasps> And then just went about, just, just, we just went about our business. And Becky was so stunned. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like that scene in Mad Men when they're on the picnic and they get up and they just like dump all their trash into the grass and walk away because it's like 1952. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> you just well, kicked it under. I, like, <gasps> I was like, yeah, no, we're Problem just going to get rid of it. Problem solved. <laughs> Let's go get another drink crazy uh, crazy times but I don't remember the first time we all hung out 
that would be like a good end to the show to be like, oh yeah. And then there was this really fun story where the four <laughs> of the wives who, well, oh, maybe it's a good time to bring up. Everyone is okay with the word wives. Mm-hmm. Audience, audience. Everyone Tell them is, who came uh-huh. up with tri wives. Matt was actually the first one to ever come up with the word wives. I, I was a tri wife before I was married. Mm-hmm. Every, we're all totally okay <laughs> with being called wives. Yeah. <laughs> Matt came up with it. Matt, Matt is the best of us. It was, he, it he was always the name comes of, up with the best stuff. Yeah. It was the name of our text thread. Yeah. I think we had buzzed wives. Yes. And then we changed it <laughs> to Try Wives. Because it was BuzzFeed. BuzzFeed. Buzz 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 because we would be there for and the booze. And we would be normally always, drinking. We would, yeah. We would show up for the booze. Like, because we were only invited to the open bar things. Right. Mm-hmm. Because they were like the holiday party and the, you know, I don't know, this and that influencer event. And we'd be mm-hmm. like, is there an open bar? Okay, then I'll go. You know? <laughs> it kind of sounds like when we met each other, it was sort of the beginning of the rest of our lives. Know. You know, because like that's when that's sort of when the guys took off, and yeah. that's when you guys got engaged. Oh. That's I mean, Becky had moved to to Freshly LA, moved. so that was like when yeah. you and Keith were like you were stuck together. Yeah, I'm so happy that we I have all of you guys through all of this because I can't even imagine being a significant other of someone so publicly known and. Not yeah. having a support system. I should have to be by yourself. Yeah. yeah. That'll, okay. Especially so that'll at events. Next, that will be the next podcast yeah. is like us becoming even better friends as the Try Guys came up, up, up. Yeah. Uh, because we were all leaning on each other when our Instagram started to go crazy. Mm-hmm. And we were like, how, what is this life? <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, please help. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Please send help. Please send help. <laughs> yeah. What are What are you doing about this? What are you wearing to this? <laughs> yeah. A lot of conversations about what are you wearing to this. But having some like a group of friends to like cling on to at like events when the boys are talking to important people is very nice. So. Mm-hmm. Talking about important Sweet. people, uh, you can get this podcast uh, anywhere you get your podcast. <laughs> yep. Uh, Spotify, Apple, other places. Guys, we have our own email. Sure do. You can sit with us, pod at gmail.com. And we want to answer your questions. We want to bring up your conundrums on this podcast because we are here for you. You can sit with us. That's our show, guys. Pod number two. We'll see you next time. Bye. 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 Bye.